we are back playing time raiders and today i'm bringing you my beginner's guides so that way you guys can level up fast focus your resources in key areas so you can start slaying some powerful enemies and who knows you might be slaying some powerful players as well now you can take a look down here we got our little chirpy okay he's not so little anymore he's basically an adult these days your boy has been leveling up i've been playing like crazy the last week and i just got to give a huge shout out to time raiders for sponsoring this video of course you'll find a link in the description to download time raiders for free and if you use my code omniarch you're gonna get some free stuff when you start to play if you want to play with me make sure you make an account in server 5 and join the clan suzaku this is the clan that i'm currently in it's the most powerful clan on the server right now so you can't miss us and there's a couple of open slots here for new members however if the server is full don't worry you can actually play with players across different servers in this game so whichever server is is fresh and new join that one and enjoy the game I'm sure we'll cross paths at some point but you can also find my discord down below let me know if you start playing time Raiders so we can start playing together okay without further ado let's jump into the beginners guide now for the first 70 or 80 levels right now you can see I'm level 210 but for the first 70 or 80 you want to focus on just doing the main quest just do the tutorial just get through that early game so that way you start to unlock a lot of the different features that you get here in time Raiders for me my main quest is to hit level 220 and sometimes you'll reach these certain stopping points where you have to actually go out and explore a bunch of the different things that the game has to offer before you can level up even further and progress in the main story so there is a ton of content here in time Raiders besides just the main story besides just the tutorial there's I mean there's limited time events there's a ton of different clan events there's also just your daily activities there's so much that you can do here in time Raiders that it might be a little bit overwhelming at first which is why I'm making this video so once you get past those first early levels then you want to start to focus your time in a few different ways the first thing that I do when I log into time Raiders every day is I click on the little calendar here and this basically tells me a ton of stuff that that I get to do now the first thing is I send out my clan caravan this is really important and this is we're gonna talk a lot about clans in this video but this is one reason why you absolutely want to be a part of a clan this is sort of a passive quest that happens in the background and it's gonna give you a ton of gold diamonds and things that you need to level up your runes trust me when I tell you you want to send out the perfect curios every time because these gold diamonds are like a pseudo premium currency they're not exactly premium but they're 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 easy to get in the early game but I can also see how you could run out of these pretty quickly so you absolutely want to do this and again this happens passively it takes about 30 minutes for it to happen so you want to start your day with sending that out the other reason you want to focus on that is because it straight up gives you 13 activity points and that is good for your daily quest and that's where we're going to start today we're going to start with your daily quests the reason that you want to start with these before you do the main quest or before you do anything else is because these reset every day there is a certain number of attempts that you can do per day and there's a couple of exceptions where you can actually get uh, tickets to do these again but in general these things give you a ton of things that you need to progress in the game and since there's a limit to how much you can do this every day you don't want to waste those chances so if the next day rolls around and you didn't use all your attempts well they don't roll over so if you take a look here in the to-do list these are all the things that will give you your daily points and of course by actually completing this you're going to get a lot of training time and we'll talk about that later as well training time is sort of a passive way for you to level up your account which is super super cool and important i actually love this feature i didn't think i would like this as much as i do but i think the the passive uh training in the background is it's beautiful i love it after i send out my clan caravan I start to do the things that give me the most amount of activity points so here you can see the Raider gathering is one that I did uh, I think two or three times today and this is a team game mode so you're gonna either play with your clan mates or you can use the auto matchmaking feature and go through the Raider gathering now again you want to go through all of these things every single day and at the very end you can do training rounds but you don't have to do these in the order that I tell you to or the order they appear on the screen you can see what they give you when you complete them so for this the catacomb undead will typically drop equipment and gold diamonds so if you need equipment 
focus on this or the undead lair. However, if you need experience, if you actually need to level up your account even more, then you want to go in. You could do the phantom passage, or you can actually go through and do the daily missions. Those also give you 20 activity points. So I like to do those around the same time I do the Raider gathering as well. Finishing your dailies is going to be the most amount of training ground time as possible. And as you can see here, this is a way to just get a ton, millions of experience just passively, just by going through the training, your game will play it uh, itself on its own. After you do all your dailies, you want to come into your clan and you want to come over to the community tab in the clan mission section. You can see a ton of other things that you should be doing within your clan. And this is going to help you upgrade your total fame. And it's going to give you a few different resources, primarily fame and clan assets. Now clan assets are important for the clan. Fame is actually a currency that you can use in your clan shop. You can find the clan shop right behind my head over here. And this is where you're going to get a lot of really important things as well. But that clan fame is also how you're going to max out some of the skills that you have in game, which is super important for DPS, which in turn is also important for leveling up fast farming experience and a ton, ton of other things as well as obviously PVP. So coming into the fame section of the mall, which you can find here in the top right corner, it looks like a little, uh, a little house with a coin and a square cutout in the middle. You click that and there's the fame portion up here. And here you can see it uses that, that V currency. That's the fame that you get from doing your clan dailies. You can do all the things here and this will give you a ton of important stuff primarily the clan bounties this is huge you want to do your clan bounties every single day a lot of the clan events you can see here like the hunt dusk the hunt night clan gathering challenges of the nine clan transference a lot of these happen at a particular time you could see when it opens and the time frame that it exists in but for the clan bounty right here this happens all day so no matter when you log in this is something that you can do and when you click on it it will actually load you into your clan territory and you basically come over here and you're going to talk to willowind and she's going to give you a couple of options for your clan bounties now you can only do five of these per day and you have a few different refresh chances which are important but you can see here this gives you an insane amount of experience for completing that specific clan bounty but you can also refresh so there's the s tier that is the best one you can be doing a is almost as good i never do b or c i'll just refresh until i get s or a because again those are going to give you a ton of really important stuff uh, the clan bounty chests are good for upgrading your runes which is going to basically just give you more base stats so attack defense hp those types of things but you're also going to get some of that clan fame on top of the fame that you get just by completing all five of them so that's the next thing you want to do first you log in you do your dailies then you do your clan bounty and all the other clan quests that you can do and then once all of that is finished then i'm going to recommend that you proceed with your main quest it's important to go through your main quest because even up to like level 200 or maybe even 180 you're still going to be unlocking different things such as promoting from r0 to r1 and then to r2 it's also how you're going to proceed through the tomb king's challenge which is how you're going to get a ton of extra equipment and experience as well so if you're not progressing through that main quest eventually you're going to bump up against a progression wall so it is still important to do that main quest after you've done the sort of time sensitive daily things the next thing i want to talk to you guys about is your skills because depending on which class you pick you're going to see different skills here okay and this is how i have mine laid out over time as you progress through the game you can see behind my head here that there's blade master then there's blade master two then three and these the two and three unlock over time as you level up which is why it's important to start to progress through a lot of the content but the thing that i want you to focus on first is if you look under the first tab no matter which one you you have no matter what you picked whether it's gunslinger or whatever the skills that you see in gray here these actually are not active skills and that's why they're in gray the other skills are skills that you actually activate in game uh if i start to fight here you can see my active skills show up and i can actually perform these but the gray ones here these actually replace your basic attack which is very important it's so important that the game actually goes out of your out of its way to tell you that it's a must have for training and farming experience. And this one is a must have for farming equipment. Uh, and again, this is very intuitive. These are skills that you're basically using 
for free look at the cooldown down here it's almost instant right it's it's all the time every time that you basically have a, a, an attack that basic skill will be replaced depending on the target that you're hitting you're just spamming your basic attacks and you're getting the benefit of this and this is for me as a guardian it's dealing a ton of skill damage and here this is literally just aoe on my basic attack so here you can see i actually went in and awakened it this is basically like maxing out that skill and i just get 20 percent bonus skill damage from awakening it that's how important that this was for me so i want you guys in the early game to focus these two first you have to bring them up to i believe it's level four as you can see over here once that's done then you can start to focus on your other skills and make sure you go ahead and read what these skills do for example for this one down here body reprisal level four this one has a chance to trigger so this is one that i focused on last because it's not that reliable i can't determine when it happens and when it doesn't but if we take a look at the first three skills these like literally deal aoe damage like these are massive aoe damage and this is straight up tied to my dps or my damage per second so for me i focused on these three before i started focusing on these two and this is going to change depending on what uh your class you picked at the beginning of the game but one thing that doesn't change are these gray ones so make sure you max out the replacements for your basic attack in the early game it's going to help you farm and level up really fast speaking of farming and leveling up really fast we have to talk about your stats okay because as you can see here if you click on your uh, profile in the top left corner you'll see your basic stats and some special stats now what i want you guys to focus on are just the four basic stats okay really it's three it's hp defense and attack there's min attack and max attack but i'm just going to refer to it as attack of these stats the one that i think and that i found is the most important and the one that i was lacking the most as i was leveling up was my min and max attack now the reason that these are so important for farming and leveling up quickly in the game is because a lot of the challenges in this game have dps checks so for example this seven star tomb Four requires that I defeat the black hair undead within 60 seconds okay and so there's two lose conditions here the first lose condition is that I die right which means if I don't have enough defense or HP then that means I'm gonna take a lot of damage and if I take too much damage I die and then I lose the other lose condition here is that I live for the entire time but I don't kill him within 60 seconds and so in this way it doesn't actually matter if your defense and your HP are through the roof whether my defense is 5,000 or 15,000 it doesn't matter because I'm still gonna lose if I can't beat him within 60 seconds so when you progress through the game and you have a choice I would always recommend leveling up the things that prioritize your min attack and your max attack now there's a few different things that you have control over for one you have your equipment right so if you take a look here I have the choice if I wanted to enhance a piece of equipment here from my plus six to my plus seven you see that I actually have two choices here right I have the moon glint sword or I have the conquering generals helmet okay both of these leveling them up or enhancing them an additional level require the same material it requires a bloodstone to go from six to seven right so I can either do the helmet or I can do the sword and you'll see that the difference between these two is that the helmet gives me HP and defense whereas the sword gives me attack so in this way uh, and one other thing you'll notice is that behind me this whole left side is all attack whereas the whole right side is HP and defense so for me and what I would recommend for you guys is focus on enhancing and blessing the left side of your equipment first just to keep it simple and then afterwards focus on your right side and we're going to talk more about equipment later in the video and you sort of want to level it up re realistically all around the same time but if you have to pick one or the other focus on the attack pieces now this is also true for your artifacts as you can see over here leveling up your artifacts requires the same materials no matter which artifact it is so if i want to star up the warring states manuscript it takes the remnant essence right if i want to level up the emerald key it also takes remnant essence now the reason that it's a different amount is because my key is actually a higher level uh, and this is a good example of me actually messing up here uh, and i can fix this very easily in this example let's say i can you know i can level up either my emerald key or my warring states manuscript 
I would recommend the warring states manuscript because again this it takes the at the same level it would take the same amount of remnant essence uh, but this is going to give you more attack whereas this is going to give you defense and hp so focusing on attack for your gear and your artifacts that's going to help you in the early game for sure beat those damage checks and those dps checks for things that you have to beat within 60 seconds or another massive one is the chamber trials these in order to get three stars on these you have to defeat them within 30 seconds okay you, and you only get a minute right but in order to three star it you have to beat it in half the time and the reason that that's so important is because that's actually how you get skill scrolls so doing the chamber trials is how you level up your skills okay so again i can't emphasize enough how important attack is for your damage per second because the better your damage per second the more you're going to get skills the faster you're going to level them up the faster you're going to progress through more content and it snowballs from there okay let's go back to the artifacts for a second i just want to explain these a little bit more for you guys and i do think that you probably understand this if you play through the tutorial for a little bit you'll understand that there are different uh you know classifications of these different artifacts right they have different categories you know these six are all considered fierce as fire artifacts and these are all from all deck directions artifacts for example and these artifacts are sort of like the gotcha system or the summoning system here in time raiders and you could obtain these artifacts in a couple of different ways some of them you'll obtain just by going through the main story the story is focused primarily around the artifacts but you also can obtain what you see up in the top right corner here these are the artifact vouchers and these every single artifact voucher is going to get you essentially uh, one summon in pan's antiquary which you can see down in the bottom left corner now you go ahead and unlock this blind box and you can play through the mini game by actually breaking away the chunks of dirt or you can click the quick complete in the top right corner and it'll tell you what you get you either get the remnant scraps and you need these in order to level up the artifacts that you already have or if you get lucky you can go through and actually get uh, shards of other artifacts or you could even summon entire artifacts and if you see the preview here the unique highest rarity artifacts have a 0.1 percent of dropping an entire artifact now that's really rare it's happened to me twice there's also a one percent chance of getting the exquisite artifacts which are in purple uh, and these are the ones that you want to focus on leveling up you want to focus on the, obviously the golden ones and also the purple ones all of that to say the more artifact vouchers you can get your hands on the more you're going to be going through that summoning system and the more artifacts that you're going to collect now it's important to get as many artifacts as you can because when you do first unlock them you get 10 uh golden diamonds which is nice or i think it's actually 100 it might be 100 i don't remember precisely but you want to actually complete these sets right so for the passage of time you can see here that there are three artifacts within the passage of time i'm actually missing one off to the right here this is the most rare of the three so it would make sense that i'm missing it but when you unlock these artifacts they give you base stats okay quite a bit of them to be honest with you but if you're lucky and you are able to actually complete one of these like chapters here you can see in the bottom right corner that there's actually some bonuses for certain chapters if you collect all of the passage of time artifacts you'll see that there's actually an additional bonus to your stats when you collect all three and furthermore there are more stats that you get as a bonus for soul fusing all of them to a particular level now if you don't know what soul fusing is it's pretty straightforward you just tap on the artifact and there's two different systems to star this up there is the regular way of enhancing it and then in the top right corner you can soul fuse and this is actually a bit more difficult it's you don't get that many soul fuse gems but essentially what you want to do when you get your hands on these is you want to save them all for a particular set that you actually complete right because that's going to get you more value for the same amount of soul fuse gems so whether i soul fuse this one plus one and then i come over here and i soul fuse this one plus one and then you know i come up here and i uh, soul fuse this one plus one it's going to cost the same as if i soul fuse all three of these to plus one but again there's an advantage to doing these three because once you hit hit level six for all three of them you get an additional stats on top of that next let's talk about some of your equipment here because a lot of the equipment you're going to notice has a prohibitory symbol 
in the top right corner you can see one two three four five a lot of the stuff it has that symbol and the reason for that is because this equipment belongs to a class that I am not so I can't use this so for example if you've played World of Warcraft or really any other MMORPG you're familiar with this system right there's plate gear there's leather gear there's cloth gear right and some gear is for warriors some is for mages and that's the same thing here in Time Raiders so all the gear with the prohibitory symbol doesn't work for blade masters so you have a few different options for anything lower than purple you can just recycle it there's a button down here and if I click that you'll see it auto selects all this stuff that I can't use that is just worthless to me and I can recycle it for just basic currency this is just cash however the purple and the gold pieces of equipment have a really unique system called the auction system which I happen to really love because what you can do instead of selling this for cash is you can auction this off for gold diamonds this is extremely important currency and you have a few different options for for doing that now you could either list it for sale which will put it up for auction for your clan or you can list it for the world auction which is anybody that anybody around now if you have a piece that somebody in your clan wants to use then great news you can list it for sale for them and then there's not that many people they have to compete with to get the best price for that piece however if nobody in your clan needs that or if you want to be a little bit selfish you can straight up just list this for world auction and you're going to reap the rewards for doing that I personally have been listing all of my purples for world auction and I've been saving some of the golden stuff for just my clan however there's another use for purple materials which is again I love this system in the game let's say you got your hands on a couple of star gems and these are what you need to refine a piece of equipment and these are actually pretty rare you're not going to get your hands on a lot of these so in the event that you are able to refine something you can see here that I have three which is enough to bring something from plus two to plus three which is nice the refining system will actually give you bonus stats okay it'll give you bonus stats which is really nice you can see this is it's a two star gauntlet I know my head's in the way here but if I want to refine this again I actually only have a 25 percent success rate however you can actually go ahead and increase that success rate by putting in materials that you no longer need right so for example this is an r0 piece yes it's golden but i actually already have that piece and it's plus one so that's a duplicate for me so i can actually place this into the refinement and now boom there's a 100 chance that this refinement is successful and guys i never even attempt this unless it's 90% or higher because I really don't want to waste these keeping a couple of extra purple pieces around to actually go through and uh you know refine is super important the other thing I want to talk about with the crafting system and the gear system is enhancing and blessing as you can see in the top here now what I'm going to recommend that you do is you enhance again you enhance the stuff with the attack first but you also want to focus on getting an entire set uh up to a particular level so as you can see in the bottom bottom here it says all body parts plus nine and i have four of those bars are are filled in which means i have four pieces that are plus nine and you can count them here and you'll see that that is the case if i reach that goal i actually gain 15 percent attack and 15 percent hp that's a pretty substantial buff that's really good stuff and you can do that for your r0 gear your r1 gear and your r2 gear and so on and so forth so you want to actually stop at those milestones so that way you get that multiplier effect on your entire account and on all of your base stats which is super important the same thing is true for the bless system up here if you get all body parts to plus seven you gain another special stat there's a ton of extra stats you can get here as you can see i'm already getting four and seven percent of equipment stats just because these are all level three or higher and finally there's the refining system and this is something you can only do for purple or gold equipment what's cool about this is when you refine like we talked about before you gain an extra stat you gain an extra star and when you get a total number of stars 
you get a ton of extra bonuses as well so here i get a three percent defense bonus or i can get a three percent wound rate i also gain the bonus of getting 23 stars and 22 stars so you just gain some bonus stats attack defense hp things like that the refined system is a total star level which means you can level up you know sort of however you want but the enhance and bless system requires that all of the pieces be at least a certain level in order to get that full bonus so keep that in mind uh you want to reach those those milestones because those stopping points are where you're, you're going to get the most value for the materials and resources that you're using for these systems now the final tip that i want to leave you guys with is going back to the clan system you want to be a part of a clan here in time raiders because this is after all an mmorpg it's a massively multiplayer online role-playing game which means part of the fun and part of the experience is it being a multiplayer game and playing with other people but the other reason that it's super important to be in a clan is because you can actually assist your clan members with events that are much harder for them to do so for example I can go up to lair level uh, lair floor two and defeat this elite spike ridge great rat let's say i was having trouble with this blood zombie this level 190 blood zombie i can actually go into this with auto sending assist requests so when i go in what this is going to do is send out a request to my clan members to actually come in and help me with this so as you can see down here in the assist uh, this is sent out to all my clan members and I can't actually help myself, but my other clan members can come in and they will actually spawn in next to me and they'll start to deal damage to this level 190 blood zombie and they can help me out with the content. So if you're going up against something that you can't complete alone, and this is one of your dailies, by the way, you have to do these every single day. If you can't complete them by yourself, then you have to join a clan. And that's a good thing. It's good to sort of interact with other players and be social in the game and build that community. And of course it doesn't just end here. You can see in the bottom left corner, what time it is in the game. And that will correspond to the events in your clan. So right now in about 30 or 45 minutes, the night hunt is going to start and the top three clans gain extra rewards from going and doing this in about 10 minutes the clan gathering is going to start right a lot of these rewards and a lot of the content is behind being in a big and active clan and participating in these events with one another so somebody who is in a clan is going to be able to progress through the game much faster than somebody who isn't right whether it's helping with these you know these blood zombies and doing your dailies or doing the clan events that we talked about before or even just having your clan help you repair the curio here so you can finish your caravan every single day there's so many reasons why you want to be a part of a clan and this is all just the daily everyday reasons that's not to mention like the ore mining and transport and a ton of other events here in the game and that's not even to mention events like the nine gates league which is going to place clans up against one another in super intense battles so if you guys are in server 5 make sure you join my clan i think it's pretty clear that it's beneficial for everybody also like i mentioned before even if you can't join server 5 join whatever server is free and open in your region and you can still cross server assist other players so we can still play together but we should connect in my discord down below if you made it to the end of the video and you haven't downloaded time readers yet then i don't know what you're waiting for but there is a link in the description below make sure you download that and use code omniarch you can submit that in the top right corner there's two white envelopes you click that and go down to pack exchange there's a ton of different reward codes that are available right now because the game just launched but for me you can type in code on the arc and it's going to give you a nice little gift now i already did it so i can't get it twice but i'll try to put some other codes down below you can also check the official time raiders discord channel they always have updated codes for you for free as well that link will be in the description as well as a bunch of other social media accounts for them while you're down there click the thumbs up button it really helps out the channel a ton it helps me defeat that youtube algorithm subscribe to the channel if you're new here and you'd like to see more time raiders content comment down below your thoughts on time raiders and of course if you have any other beginners tips that i missed 
put them down there i'm still learning along with you guys and it'll be helpful for everybody with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace